What's up, everyone? Today, I want to go over a question that, again, kind of sends shivers down a lot of students' spines because um, it's about equilibrium, specifically a solubility equilibrium. So let's go ahead and get into the question, then I'll talk about its relevance. It says there's a hypothetical salt that is called XY2. The molar solubility of this salt is 10 to the negative 2 molar. Based on this information, what is this salt's KSP? And you have a ton of values here. But obviously, um, any salt, when you dissolve it in water, will dissolve to a certain extent. Think about sugar, right? When you add sugar to water, it'll dissolve. But after you add, let's say, tons and tons of sugar, eventually the sugar will stop dissolving. The concept here is that of solubility equilibrium. And this is important because your entire body is a solution. And at the end of the day, we want to know what is in solution and what is not. And to do that, we need to understand solubility equilibrium. So let's go ahead and get straight into this. So. First of all, you'll see that the question here says the molar solubility of this salt is 10 to the negative 2 molar. What is molar solubility? That's the first part of the problem. And believe it or not, there will be a lot of MCAT questions like this one. And just understanding the definitions is already going to serve you immensely well. Well, molar solubility is the number of moles, <laughs> go figure, of substance that can be dissolved per liter of solution. So, you know, the molar solubility, let's say of, um, let's say the molar solubility of a substance is 5 molar. Okay, let's say substance X has a molar solubility of 5 molar. What that means is if you had 1 liter of water, you can dissolve 5 moles of X in it. And at the end of the day, if you have any more than 5 moles, then you're going to precipitate out the, out the X. What that means is that you'll get a formation of X that is in the solid form within the solution. That's a precipitate. But up to five moles, um, everything would dissolve. So that's the molar solubility. So now let's apply it to this problem, right? Because we have a hypothetical salt that's XY2. So I drew it out here. It's right drawn right here, XY2, and then it dissociates. And assuming you know how a salt dissociates, you'll know that if you have an XY2, you'll get 1x, 2 plus ion, and 2y minus ions. So to kind of help you again visualize this, just like I did earlier, look at, let me use red since it's not mentioned here. Uh, when this dissociates, you'll get 1x, 2 plus ion, and then 2y minus ions. All right? And because that's just how the salt is. And believe it or not, this is going to be how the dissociation happens in solution. But believe it or not, if you have more then the amount that's soluble in solution, you'll also have some present, as shown here in the lower right-hand corner, in the precipitate form. And I'm abbreviating that PPT, not PowerPoint, precipitate, okay? And that just means that you added way more than the solubility constant, or I mean the molar solubility, and therefore some of it actually goes out of solution in the solid form. Um, and now, let's try to quantify this, okay? Because there's also another part to this question which says, KSP, right? The, the, at the end of the day, we're looking for KSP. Well, KSP, first of all, K is the first letter here. And you should know that for any equilibrium constant, you're always going to put the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants. This applies to anything, not just KSP, not just KA, not just KB, not just K of a reaction. Any K is products over reactants, okay? Uh, but because you're using K as an equilibrium constant, these SP kind of refers to the solubility product. So now we're telling you, we're referring specifically to the solubility product constant. But any equilibrium constant is products over reactants. More importantly, because you have an equilibrium constant, you do not include liquids and solids in an equilibrium constant. And the reason you don't include them is because their concentration does not change. Uh, you can do the math for this, but you can tell me for a fact what the concentration of water is. You can also tell me for a fact what the concentration of a particular solid is. And because those concentrations can't change, we don't include them in the equilibrium constant. All right. So if we remember these general rules about the equilibrium constant, we can now apply this to the solubility product constant. Because remember, KSP is products over reactants. In our case, we have X2 plus and 2Y minus. Those are our products. On the other hand, our reactant, see, our reactant is a solid. And we're not going to include the solid in the reactant con in the equilibrium constant because I told you you don't include liquids and solids in the equilibrium constant. So if you wanted to write out the KSP expression for this, you'd write down the concentration of X2 minus, and then you'd write down the concentration of Y minus. But the other thing you're going to notice is that there's a 2 in front of the y. When you have a coefficient in front of something that's in an equilibrium constant, it translates over as an exponent. So in this case, the KSP of this 
um, dissociation ends up becoming the concentration of x2 plus times the concentration of y minus squared. All right, so that's what the KSP value is equal to. But now, what are the numbers we want to plug in? Well, the numbers we want to plug in, we have to really think about this, okay? Because the molar solubility of this salt is 10 to the negative 2 molar. What that means is 10 to the negative 2 molar of this salt will dissolve before it precipitates out. So I kind of drew this thing again at the bottom right to show you what that, what that means. Because remember, let's say we do put in a ton of XY2 solid salt. What I'm telling you is 10 to the negative 2 molar of it will dissolve, right? And when 10 to the negative 2 molar of it dissolves, how many, mol how many molar X pl X2 plus ions do you make? Well, you'll see that for every one mole of XY2 that dissolves, you get one mole of X2 plus. And therefore, you also end up making 10 to the negative 2 molar X2, X2 plus. All right? And again, this kind of makes sense because for every one molecule of X2Y that dissolves, you get one molecule of X2. However, what you'll realize is you get twice as many. Notice this, you, you end up getting twice as many Y minuses. So you, when you when you wanted to find the change in Y minus as something's dissolving, it's going to be 2 times 10 to the negative 2. Right? So at the end of the day, when you have the equilibrium, uh, what you're going to see is at equilibrium, you're going to have 10 to the negative 2 molar X2 plus, but then you're going to have 2 times 10 to the negative 2 molar of Y of y minus just because when you dissociate you make one x2 plus and two y minus and what you're now going to do is because these are your concentrations as e at equilibrium you can now plug them into our equation right ksp is equal to 10 to the negative 2 times 2 times 10 to the negative 2 squared and i know there's no calculator allowed on the math on the mcat and therefore you should be tr able to do these exponents in your head 10 to the negative 2 times 4 times 10 to the negative 4 gives you 4 times 10 to the negative 6. And if you turn the page, you will see that that matches answer choice D. That is the best answer. Hope you guys understood this. Hope you understood how molar solubility connects to KSP, how KSP problems work. And um, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. In the video, really appreciate it. If you want to check out any of my other videos, there's going to be one right here. Another link to one of my videos right here. And another video right here. Why not? I'll put one video right over here. And last but not least, if you want to subscribe to this channel, really appreciate it because I'm still an early YouTuber trying to get it down. But a subscription button should be right over here. So please subscribe. Cool. Thanks. See you guys in the next one. Hope you find these videos helpful.